Hello traders, my name is John Paul, founder of Day Trade to Win. Today I'm going to discuss four questions, a checklist of why or why not you should be taking any trade. If you're a trader and you're jumping in the market just because it looks good or seems like it's going to happen, forget about it, you're doing it wrong. Today is a great opportunity to go long using the Atlas line, but believe it or not, not every signal should be taken. I'm going to run down the list with you of four reasons why or why not we should be taking a trade whether you're using the Alice line or trade scalper or any method that you may be looking at this will definitely help you before we begin remember that trading is risky please don't trade with funds you cannot afford to lose talk to your broker understand there are risks involved with trading so currently what you're seeing here is the Atlas line on your chart that blue dashed line the Atlas line is indicating a great long opportunity with that first signal and then we have all these other signals the strength and the pullback trade and so with the Atlas line, we have this opportunity to turn off or turn on the signals, right? The strength trade, the pullback trade, the main signal, the bounce signal, and so on. But every time that we take a trade, whether it be the Atlas line or the trade scalper, there should be four questions that we should consider. At least consider these four questions. Check them off. Make sure that we're doing the right thing before jumping in. So question number one is, have a reason to enter into the trade. So what is the reason we're entering to this trade? Is it just because it looks good? Is it because it's a double top, double bottom? Is it because of support, resistance? Is there a signal on the chart? So if you take here today's signals here, the first signal is the Atlas line long. So I have a reason to go long. Or take this next signal, which is a strength trade. I have a reason to go long. So you have to have a reason why we're buying or selling the market. And here's another reason. Here's a pullback signal with the three P's and so on. Here's another one, another one, another one. So there's a reason why we're actually buying this market today because I'm following something. It could be your own method or it could be something like the Atlas line or the trade scalper, a reason. Number two, what is a reason to avoid the trade? So not only do we have to have a reason to enter into the trade, which I have here, but I also have to have some understanding of why shouldn't I? Is there volatility? Too much volatility? Is the market too slow, too fast? Is there news? Do we have two or more consecutive methods that are conflicting? Do we have two or more consecutive losing trades as an example? So if you have two, three, four losing trades, should I continue trading? So again, reason number two is avoid the trade, have a reason why I should or should not take this trade. The next question, number three, is, is there anything confirming? So if I want to take a trade long here, is there anything else telling me I should take a trade long? So if I add, as an example, the trade scalper signal here, the software, the trade scalper, to the chart, I don't have to do anything here. Just click OK to accept it. Do I have any short signals? Do I have any signals uh, that are conflicting right at the same time I'm about to go long? Is there anything telling me short? And as you can see, the trade scalper signals are long. The Atlas line signals are long. They are all telling me long. Even if I go and continue here on throughout the day, most of them are all long until the market starts to go down. And then we have trade scalper short. So you may want to skip these if you have the Atlas line and if you have the trade scalper together on your chart, always have a reason to skip a trade or to filter it out because there may be two or more things there conflicting. Now we don't have any long signals, we only have short signals. Here we have long signal after long signal after long signal, but there's nothing here indicating short. So as you can see, you're picking and choosing the signals, making sure that there's nothing conflicting. So I think the better example would be these here in the beginning of the day where we have both Atlas line long and we have trade scalper long signal. So there's two methods there that are in accordance and agreeing instead of conflict. Now the last question I always ask myself, even if we have everything confirming, there's nothing conflicting, I have a reason to enter into the trade. So I'm checking all of these boxes. The last question is the risk. So not every trade is worth the same. Some trades may have a smaller target, other trades may have a larger target and that also goes with a smaller stop and a larger stop. So let's focus on the stops here for a minute. If I take this trade right here or this trade right here, I have to know what am I up against. If the trade fails, which it always could, 
what if the trade fails? What am I going to lose? What's the risk? And so if I think about, and I use, and I teach this with the ATR, I use the average true range as a measure of if the market is slow or fast. And so using a one minute chart, I can see that the ATR is about three points. And therefore I'm able to maybe take a three point target, but is my risk 10 points? And if the answer is no, obviously I don't want to risk 10 points to make three, then we immediately skip that trade. So the risk is actually the most important part of this because I need to know what I'm up against. If I'm risking so much that it's not worth taking the trade, leave it alone, filter it out, move on. So as an example, one of the methods that you've probably seen a few videos on is a pivotal stop that I taught actually in the most previous video. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the description. A pivotal stop is based on what is the pivot of this particular pattern with the atlas line with the signal to go long and what is going to be my risk so I always look for the trades with the smallest amount of risk so I see here a trade that actually failed this is a losing trade and so if I see this pullback trade I'm gonna expand this out here if I see this trade and it's telling me that the markets pulling back that it's going to continue and I wanna go long I realize that this here is the pivot and my risk on this trade is actually very small we're talking about a point, point and a half, possibly with slippage. So it's not the end of the world with a six tick stop, but yet my target is closer to two and a half points. So even though this trade failed, as you can see, the next candle, the market went down, hit my stop. It's only a six tick or five or six tick loss. And that to me makes a lot more sense to take this type of trade where I, if I had the stop, all the way down here and my risk was let's say five and a quarter points but I'm only trying to make two and a half or two and a quarter at that point I would skip that so the risk that you're subjecting yourself to when entering into a trade has to be understood and this is again what we teach here at day trade to win and it's not just signals and trade scalp or an outline but it's also understanding price action with stops time based stops the targets Every situation is a little bit different, and these are things that are not typically taught. They're not understood when uh, trading the market. It can be done on any market whatsoever. And so if I was going to take, for example, this trade scalper signal to the long side here, I need to know what my risk is. If I was going to take this strength trade here, I need to know what my risk is. If I'm going to take this pullback trade, I might want to skip this because the risk on this pullback trade right over here, if I entered here, and my stop is based on a pivotal stop of six points, six and a half points. You can see that the ATR is much smaller. It's three points, three and a quarter. So here's a great example to say I'm filtering out this trade, completely not worth taking because the target I'm about to achieve or try to achieve is only, let's say, three points, but my risk is six and a half. Immediately, it's an overbought situation. You filter it out. In comparison to this example where the risk here is much smaller here a point and a half risk to try to make two and a half it's more than a one-to-one -one ratio fantastic I think this is a much better opportunity to be in so these are the four questions three or four questions that I ask myself and that every trader should ask themselves as well before jumping into the the trade my name is John Paul. If you have any questions, if you'd like to join the new Accelerated Mentorship class, visit daytradetowin.com. We have a great opportunity, a great special now going on. Visit daytradetowin.com. Give us a call. We're here to help you. Until next time, good trading. If you're new to day trading and want to learn more on the benefits of trading the markets, visit daytradetowin.com. Join the next mentorship class starting later this month and subscribe to the Day Trade to Win YouTube channel. We focus on price action and work exclusively with new and beginner traders who want to learn more on how to prosper from trading.